So the spy has finally showed some bearish strength. All right, today, in the last few days, not counting the weekends, of course, the bears have been winning. Now I tell you guys, we got we, we want to remain bulls in this bull market. Don't buy the tip, we buy the dip. I say these fancy things. But is today the dip? Or is this the beginning of a correction? Of course, I can't tell the future. No one can tell the future, but we can study the charts and look at the different movements, the different scenarios that can possibly happen so that we can be prepared. This is Beat the Markets Technical Analysis. Now, I told you guys that as long as SPY is trading above the 20-day moving average, I will be bullish on SPY. This yellow line right here that's creeping up right here that you can't barely see, it's currently at the 429.97 level. As you can see, in the post market and the after hours, SPY is at 425.18, it closed at 424.97, under 425. That means it's under the 20 day moving average, which is a sign that the bears are building strength. Now, if I bring the five day and the 13 day, you can see the five day but the cross below the 13 day moving average. So, yes. The bears is building strength. But is this the time to start shorting? Is this the beginning of a correction? Maybe. But let's take a look, guys. Let's take a look at the last couple times that the SPY dropped to the 50-day moving average. Because that's where it was. I told you guys many times, one of my favorite entries is just below the moving day average. The 20-day or the 5-day, whatever, depending on the situation i said that i wanted to enter just below the 20 day moving average and this orange area is my area of liquidity but when spy opened this morning it opened under my area of liquidity it was not where i wanted it this long wick right here did not happen i don't know why trading view is showing us this long wick but it did not happen this is a big gap guys from 420s what is that from 426 19 all the way up here to 430 48 that's a gap. This wick does not exist. If I go to a lower time frame, you see the gap right there. You will see the gap, okay? Let's go back to the daily. But look where it dropped to, down to the 50-day moving average. Orange line, 50-day moving average. It went just under, and then it went back up. Look at this right here. Let me take out this area of liquidity. Look at this right here, guys. It dropped past the 50-day moving average. The next day it went up. To the drop to the 50-day moving average, continued going up. Drop to the 50-day moving average, continued going up. The next day, so here we are again. Drop to the 50-day moving average. What's people gonna do? What are people going to do? So, yes, I bought the dip because that's what we do in the bull market, right? Last few times, it went to the 50-day moving average. It went up higher to new highs. Okay? So what I want us to watch out for, it is crucial that SPY continues to stay above this 50-day moving average. We need SPY to get back above the 20-day moving average, which is around 430 level. If we get rejected there, that is a bearish price action. We also have this blue line right here. Let me move everything out so you can see this blue line. I'm going to remove the drawing. I'm going to add the blue line. Wait, one second. All right, here we go. So here, this previous high to that high, and then boom. Okay, so this was a high, a previous high. Got test here, and boom, it broke down. So anytime we get a breakout, we always want to see the retest, just like this one, and then go up even higher. Unfortunately, SPY came back to retest. and didn't even get a chance to retest it. There's a gap here, remember? It gap below it, below our critical support level. So this is looking bearish. Okay, now let me bring everything back. So what I want us to watch out for is this 20-day moving average. Can SPY get back above there? If SPY gets rejected there and fails to break back above, that's a very bearish signal. Okay, 
and we could see some more downside we have an area of imbalance here remember in my other video i taught you i explained to you guys briefly what an area of imbalance means it means like in this area right here from this wick to that wick you guys see it this whole area this big green candle that's imbalance too many buy orders there's no sell orders the market needs to balance itself right so we need to get some sell orders in this zone spy is very close there okay so that's one of the scenarios spy could if it get rejected at the 20 day it could come down past the 50 day and come to this area of imbalance which is around the 41778 to 4 420 level okay area of imbalance it could come to fill this and head right back up now spy still have a lot of reasons why you should head back up we have this big area of liquidity here got double top so they set this up we also have more areas of liquidity there from the rising wedge right there that they set up so there's a lot of money up there for them to come get okay a lot of money will they just leave it up there i doubt it okay so we could see a bounce from here at this 50-day moving average which we did there was a minor gap right here you guys see that you see this minor gap that's filled this gap is filled okay so if it breaks back above the 20-day moving average i will be bullish again and we will head back up to this areas of liquidity around the 438 to 442 range there's a lot of money that the market makers left up there if we do not make it back up i will be watching if this if we can get a bounce in this area of unbalanced imbalance all right will it balance it back out and then will we get a bounce back up we will see we also have this big old gap down here okay it's been here for a while 400 to full three level okay that's our bearish scenario if we fail to get back above 430 spy then you know that's bearish price action we could see more downside but if spy gets back above 430 just know we are on our way back to new all-time highs okay now let's move on to the triple q what before i go to triple q take a look at the vix vix inverses the spy guys this inverses the spy and measures or represent the fear in the market as you can see the fear is growing P people talking about COVID again and all this other stuff not good um we got this downtrend right here resistant line right here and today intraday the vix did get above it but it wasn't able to close above however vix did close above the 200 day moving average with as long as vix above the 200 day moving average, there's going to be a lot of volatility and uh not good for spy this could be a sign that a stock market correction is coming but if vix can get head back below the 200 day moving average then this was nothing more than a, just a regular pullback in the bull market okay so definitely keep your eyes on the vix vix get back above this resistant level or continues to close above this 200 day moving average stock market correction could be near but if it gets back below spy will probably continue to bounce and head back to new all-time high and take out all these areas of liquidity that i highly doubt the market makers will just leave all right so that's spy and vix on to triple q take a close look at triple q right now i've mentioned in in previous videos a handful of times that triple q could be following wick offs distribution schematic one now my last few videos i didn't really mention the schematic because we didn't really find a top in the utad phase yet however we are seeing some confirmation guys this is a big sell-off right here all the way from 365 you know down to 352 351 inch a day that's you know that's a good amount of money going so um you know good price action to the downside all right so this is good it could be the top right here but you know here take a look guys that is accumulating okay see so if it's right we could drop back down to the bc level okay and bc level is all the way down here at 338 so that is a big drop guys really big drop however keep in mind that we do have this big gap that needs to get filled now let me bring up the moving averages okay so from the 20 day to the 50 day that is a big window guys so bears this could look good however however there is an area of liquidity up here okay will the market makers leave it up there i doubt it okay so definitely watch this all right watch the price action don't jump don't jump the gun just yet guys if 
Triple Q fails to break this and stay above the 20-day moving average, then of course, we, it bears price action. So I will look for Triple Q before entering. I will look for it to fill this gap. And if you are bearish, you can look to enter here around this level, bet to the downside. We also have an imbalance up here. You can't really see it on this daily, but you can definitely see it on the five. Oh, uh, no, not the five, the four, the four hour chart right here. It's a little small imbalance. It's not really big, but it's small. Okay. And then the gap, we got the gap over here. All right. So, yep, we got this gap fill that needs to get filled. And we're still trading below the 20. So, bearish strength is picking up big time, guys. So, if Triple Q gets back above the 20 and closes above the 20, fills this gap and stays above this level, I'll be bullish. You know, definitely head back to 367 soon, hopefully. But if not, like I said, this could be the beginning of a very bad, bad correction that's coming. And this could drop all the way to 338 and it will get choppy for the test. And then holy moly, we'll get this big, big downside, okay? This is the distribution schematic one. Look, take a good look at it. It looks very similar to Triple Q, okay? See, pretty similar. It looked a little messed up, but it is. See? So we're in phase C. This is UTAD. If it's following wick off, this is a big, still a big drop, which is just below the 50-day moving average. You know how I like that. Good entry. Similar to SPY, but this is definitely not where SPY is. All right, so I can't tell you if I'm bullish or bearish, but definitely watch the price action. Fill this gap. What's triple, two, triple Q going to do after this gap gets filled? Will it even fill the gap? We do have an area of imbalance. So for all we know, Triple Q could come back down, fill up this area of imbalance right here from 346 to 344, and then could head back up higher. So we'll see. If you are going to look to short it, short it above the 20-day moving average right here. You may cut your loss around this level. Or look to short around this area of liquidity. Don't short it and catch FOMO now, guys. Get in good levels. All right? Of course, I'm still bullish. This is a bull market. So, you know, wake off is not 100% guaranteed. All right? So, this could be another buy the dip scenario. So, watch how it plays out what it want to do, okay? So, right now, neutral on Triple Q. Moving on to Tesla. Tesla. What did I tell you guys? In my last video where I covered Tesla, what I say was going to happen? What did I say was going to happen? I said if Tesla doesn't stay above this line, it will come back and touch this resistant line. This resistant line that they made since May. Look at that. Touch there, touch there. They made this. Market makers purposely make this. They don't just make it for no reason because they want to fake us out. So when they came back and tested the support line, what do you think people did? They entered that support. What do you think they let their stop loss? In this green area. So this is a green area of potential money areas, areas of liquidity. I want you guys to learn about the areas of liquidity. It came down, took out everybody's stop loss, and boom, went right back up. This happened exactly like I said. I told you guys to accumulate around the 620 area, okay, when it gets to this green area. And sure enough, look at that, okay? So looks like a false breakdown, and usually after the false, break, false breakdown comes something very powerful and bullish to the upside which I believe will be 718. Remember, I believe when ST and phase B is following wick off accumulation. See that? Okay. ST and phase B. So we go back and check this one more time. ST and phase B, we should be heading past the AR level. Okay, I've been saying this for quite some time. And let's see if it'll come true this time, all right? But this definitely came true, came to our area of liquidity. Strong green bounds. I'm expecting more upside up past 700 this time. Okay, we got earnings coming up. So it might dump after earning. Who knows? According to wick off, it will. According to wick off, it will dump after earning. So until earnings, I say ride this baby out, ride a wave up. All right, so we covered SPY. We covered Triple Q. We covered the NC. And then we covered the stock Tesla. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. This is some sad, sad stuff, huh? Or is it? Covering, uh, following the wick off as well. Now, you already know I've been saying wick off, wick off, wick off. But it's not looking like it's getting that bounce to the upside like wick off predicted, right? Now, 
market makers been setting up this support level. Boom, 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 boom. Four days in a row, it bounced off the 31K. Now today, it finally broke down. Now I said to you guys, I don't feel like it's a good time to enter. When market makers keep setting up support levels like that, it makes me nervous. I'd rather they take out the stop losses first before I look to enter. So this white area is our area of liquidity. You know, this is where I would look to enter. If it breaks down below this level, I would look to enter just below ST in phase B, which is around 28K, all right, to the 2700 uh, support level, okay? Below that, we got support at 24K, 26K, and all that. But I don't think it'll get that low. I could be wrong, but I don't think so, all right? We have area of imbalance right here that Bitcoin needs to fill. And an even bigger area of imbalance right here that Bitcoin needs to fill. Guys, usually areas of imbalance, they usually get filled. Is it all the time? No, but 80 to 90% of the time they get filled, okay? You guys can definitely check my previous video. My last video where I covered Bitcoin when I was talking about areas of liquidity and how to identify imbalance. Definitely check out that video. But right now, Bitcoin is in the area of liquidity. This is the buy area. And under here as well will be the buy area. So up to you guys, I'm not a financial advisor. All I can tell you is that market makers have been accumulating. The whales have been accumulating. The Bitcoin miners have been accumulating. This is the accumulation zone where the big boys accumulate. Not in distribution zone. Distribution zone when they start selling at higher prices. They're distributing you know, the Bitcoin to retail traders who are foolish enough to buy at the high price. Now we got at a cheap price. This is accumulation where the whales will look to accumulate Okay, they're buying from the weekends. That's how they accumulate. You know, you enter here, they take, they enter and take out your stop loss. That's how they accumulate. So, will you be accumulating as well? Or will you allow these wheels to manipulate? You got you thinking Bitcoin's going to drop some more. Okay, so I'll, I'm looking to accumulate. Is it my zone? Okay. So, Bitcoin looks good to me. This is where you buy. You don't get bearish at support. Or the buy zone all right so that's just my opinion i'm not a financial financial advisor this is just my opinion this is how i cover it and i gave you guys my reasons my reasonings for it and if you like what you hear definitely hit the subscribe button uh join my facebook beat the market links in the description uh and if you don't like it then i'm sorry i try <laughs> but thanks for watching and checking out my video anyways all right guys so have a good day have a good evening, good luck, continue to beat this market, and I see you soon.